Hello guys, my name is Cameron and welcome to Road Dog Gaming and today we are doing something kind of special. Now I know I said that the Raw review and SmackDown review were done, which for the time being they are until I have a way of recording them just a little bit better. But um... But um, today I decided, uh, since I watched the uh, Raw or the li SmackDown Live, the first episode of SmackDown Live on Wednesday, yesterday, uh, for the draft, obviously, I figured the draft. I need to do a review of the draft, give my opinion on it, and talk to you guys about who was drafted and where they were drafted to. Okay, so before I start talking about the draft, I should give you guys a few rules. First off, Raw did have the first pick. Um, since Raw is the three-hour show, which this is kind of a stupid rule if you ask me, they got three picks for every one of SmackDown's two picks. Um, tag teams could be drafted separately um, if they wanted to, if that's what they were fine with, if they wanted to. Uh, or, sorry, tag teams count as one pick unless they... Unless the person, the general manager, commissioner, whatever, said they only want him drafted as one. And six people were drafted from the NXT roster. Um, I think that's about it. Um, so, I figured, now, we'll get into it. So, uh, ignore Lillian Garcia. No one gives a shit about her. No offense, Lillian, but you're kind of annoying. Alright. So... We're gonna start off with round number one. The first draft of the night, the first pick of the night, no one kind of was shocked by this, was Seth freaking Rollins, which was kind of expected. I mean, uh, I should probably turn my volume off. I'm sorry about that, you guys forgot to. All right, pick number two for, all right, so with Ross first pick, All right, with Ross first pick, they chose Seth Rollins, probably building to make him the champion, which is kind of a given. I can see why. Number two pick, SmackDown's first pick, was Dean Ambrose. Obviously, he's the champion. They want him to continue to be the champion, so that's an obvious choice. Number three for Raw, their second pick was the women's champion, Charlotte, which makes sense. Which, you know, it makes sense that they want to have the women's division. They want to have the champion there, no matter how long she's going to be champion for. Number four, SmackDown's second pick, the phenomenal AJ Styles. We'll get down to the club later. And number five, Raw's third pick in the first round. They chose to bring up one of my favorites, the demon Finn Balor from NXT. Alright, round number two. Now, <clears throat> this starts off with a bit of a shock pick. Roman Reigns to Raw. I, I guess I can see why, but to be honest, eh? Okay, though. Number seven, John Cena to SmackDown. Which I can see why. Number eight, the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar to Raw. Number nine. Brock's opponent at SummerSlam, the Viper to SmackDown. And number 10, you better clap for your world tag team champions. The New Day goes to Raw. Round number three, Sami Zayn to Raw. Bray Wyatt to SmackDown. Sasha Banks to Raw. Becky Lynch to SmackDown and Chris Jericho to Raw. I'm kind of trying to go through this kind of fast, you guys. Round number four, the United States Championship with his... Beautiful fiance Lana to Raw. The Miz and his gorgeous wife Maurice to SmackDown. Kevin Owens to Raw. Baron Corbin to SmackDown. And Enzo and Cass to Raw, which I take with a grain of salt because Enzo and Cass are my favorite. I want him to go to SmackDown. Round number five. The Club, Gallows and Anderson 
to Raw, which means they could be setting up for a whole Bullet Club reunion type thing with Finn Balor, Gallows, and Anderson. Number 22 pulled up from NXT, American Alpha goes to SmackDown. The Big Show to Raw. Dolph Ziggler, the show off to SmackDown. Nia Jax being pulled up from NXT to Raw. Round number six, the man that gravity forgot, Neville to Raw, Natalia to SmackDown, the Swiss Superman Cesaro to Raw, Alberto Del Rio, okay, Del Rio, I can't do it, Alberto Del Rio to SmackDown, number 30, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus to Raw, number, uh, round seven, number 31, the Golden Truth goes to Raw. The Usos to SmackDown. Titanus O'Neil to Raw. Demon Kane to SmackDown and Paige to Raw. Round number eight, the challenger for the Intercontinental Championship at Battleground, Darren Young with Bob Backlund to Raw. Number 37, Kalisto to SmackDown. Sin Cara to Raw, breaking up the Lucha Dragons. Excuse me. Which kind of makes me sad, but it's it was expected. They decided to go to get drafted as per singles. Naomi to SmackDown. Jack Swagger to Raw. The Ascension to SmackDown. Round number nine. Pick number 42. The Dudley Boys to Raw. Zack Ryder to SmackDown. Summer Rae to Raw. Apollo Crews to SmackDown. Mark Henry to Raw. Alexa Bliss to SmackDown. Oh yeah, being pulled up from NXT. Sorry about that one. I forgot to mention that. Round number 10. Braun Strowman to Raw. Breezango to SmackDown. Bo Dallas to Raw. Eva Marie to SmackDown. The Shining Stars to Raw. The Vaude Villains to SmackDown. One minute. Sorry, forgot to mention the Shining Stars were a pull-up from NXT. And round number 11, Alicia Fox to Raw, Eric Rowan to SmackDown, Dana Brooke to Raw, Moho Raleigh being pulled up from NXT to SmackDown, Curtis Axel to Raw, and Carmelo, Carmella being pulled up from NXT to SmackDown. Uh, going undrafted was Heath Slater, so it could mean the end of the Social Outcast, maybe? Hopefully not, because I think everyone loves the Social Outcast. They're not the best tag team, but they're funny. Sometimes. Um, also going undrafted, Luke Harper. So, questions to where the Wyatts will be standing after Battleground. Um, a lot of confusingness with how the draft was set up, mainly because you kind of look at it, it's like they're obviously pulling for Raw to be the better show before giving SmackDown a chance, which is kind of BS if you ask me. Personally, SmackDown has always been my favorite show. I don't know why. Maybe it was because it was on Friday nights when it first, or it was on Friday nights when I was young, or so I was able to, uh, you know, watch it fully without having a problem with getting up the next day for school. Um, but uh, so let's talk about this. So first off, we obviously see that the whole beat up John Cena mentality of the club has gone away with the club being split up you have no idea how that's going to continue after battleground between with the matchup between enzo and Cass and john cena and the club sorry now disbanded club um you also see that <coughs> the lucha dragons who could have been an amazing tag team got split up which is I mean, it was their decision, but it's still kind of a huge loss. I was still kind of hoping that maybe, just maybe, they'd be drafted to the same brand just to keep them as a tag team at some point. Um, but, you know, it was their decision. I understand why they didn't want to be a tag anymore. It can screw your career over. Look at Darren Young. Everyone's saying he was never great. He was very great as a tag team competitor, and now he wants to be a singles competitor. He just was never great as a singles champion. Um, as a singles wrestler, sorry, not champion. Um, it definitely feels like with the whole, well, obviously the cruiserweight division is now being set up on Raw. Stephanie McMahon announced that. Um, last Raw, last time on Raw. Um, and it seems like they split the women's division a lot up, uh, like a lot in this. It's like, come on, you guys have the women's champion. Uh, also, they have the women's championship. They have the cruiserweights. They have the tag team championship. They have uh, the, the, the United States championship. They don't have the Intercontinental Championship. And, um, well, 
There's gonna be two world titles, so I guess that's good. Uh, but they still have just the world champion and the and uh, the uh, Intercontinental Championship. That's all they've got for SmackDown. Which it's like seriously, you guys gave them two championships and you have three. No, wait, wait, sorry. Sorry, they have the women's, the tag, the United States, and the cruiserweight coming in. So they have four. So it makes you wonder, are they going to do two separate women's divisions? Are they going to have a title such as the TV title, the European title, something along those lines to put into SmackDown to make it to where the championships are even? Are they going to have their own tag division? Are they going to have... Well, they're obviously not going to have a cruiserweight division. That's already been announced. When will they get their world title? If so, when they do, what title will it be? Will it be then bringing back the WWE and the World Heavyweight Championships? Or will it be something along the lines of one of the other ones I just mentioned, such as the European or the TV or something along those lines? Make the hardcore title or something like that exclusive to SmackDown. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so there are a few matches in the night along with everything there was a handicap match between Charlotte and Dana Brooke against obviously Sasha Banks um I believe I believe Sasha Banks won that I uh, did not write down the matches so I'm just gonna have to look up uh, turn off my volume again I'm gonna look up the matches. Sorry about that. I should have probably wrote these down. Uh, sorry about that, you guys. That was my fault. Um. Oh shoot. Uh, I'm sorry you guys. I looked up uh, June June 19th. I meant to look up July July 19th. That one is my bad. All right. So obviously the chance it kind of split between New Era for one show and uh, Originals for another. So for the first match, um John Cena defeated Lou Gallows. The club was taken out by end zone cast because they ran out to stop them from interfering which yeah I liked I liked the match it was nice uh, Darren Young and Zack Ryder defeated Rusev and The Miz which was awesome um, I feel like it was the champions versus challengers match was a really cool setup and it ended in an awesome way because it didn't end with who you thought was going to win the champions it didn't end with them immediately winning um Bray Wyatt defeated Xavier Woods. Eh, it's kind of obvious. He defeated him with his sister Abigail and then one, two, three. Uh, Bray really laid into Xavier and he got that whole hypnotic trance thing on him again. So, kind of glad this feud's ending after Battleground because, God, that is not fun for them. Uh, Demon Kane, well, versus Kevin Owens. Ended in no contest because Sami Zayn ran out. Kane ended up choke slamming both of them. And Sami Zayn actually ended up getting drafted the round right after that. Uh, Charlotte and Dana Brooke did defeat Sasha Banks, sadly, which I feel so sorry for the boss, but, you know. Chris Jericho defeated Cesaro. Nothing really interesting there. Uh, Elise Fox versus Natalia ends in a no contest. Becky Lynch ran out. Destroyed Natalia. Uh, Dean versus Seth. As you guys know, Monday Night Raw this past week was kind of controversial with the ending because, um, well, well, it ended with kind of a confusing thing. You didn't know who won, but it was uh, later decided it was a draw with uh, Dean keeping the title. Dean ended up retaining the title on SmackDown Live, um, which I saw coming. They're not going to try to split it yet. I'm confused by how they're going to do the battleground setup, seeing as how, when you look at it, some of the people that got drafted weren't drafted to the cert the same one as that title. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I think they're going to do is the titles aren't going to be set on that pay-per-view or on that brand until after battleground, seeing as how it's the last one before, well, SummerSlam is the next month, but the last one before they go to two pay-per-views a month. Um, 
fresh superstar entering the match. And you know, Michael, being fresh is a huge advantage in a match like this. So I feel like they're going to, they're not going to have the titles kind of interchangeable because there's no He's point in that. You know what I mean? Do just going to make it boring. Had to put this in two clips. Sorry. Just going to make it boring and uh, kind of the same as it is now. And I don't think they want that. I think they want it to be where each title, the titles are exclusive to each brand. So I think after Battleground, they're probably going to decide what titles go where. Um, and also, the uh, announcers were, the announce teams were decided. Sorry, I probably should have... Um, written this down too and I forgot to uh, um, okay the commentary teams are if I can find it give me a minute guys Uh, oh yeah, sorry. All right, I found it. All right, so, all right, so the new announce teams: um, Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxton on Monday nights for Raw, and Mauro Ronaldo, JBL, and David Otunga for SmackDown Live on Tuesdays. Meaning, Lawler, we have no idea what's happening to him, has been removed. Which, with the whole PG thing right now, I understand. If you guys look at it, Lawler is very sexist, a tad racist. Like, oh, Darren Young was never great, so him being a tag team champion wasn't great. But, I can understand why they got rid of Lawler finally. I'm slightly happy about it, slightly upset about it. What's going to happen now? Okay. I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I'm kind of happy, kind of upset about Lawler being removed because honestly, he's been really annoying lately. Like, Darren Young was never great. He was a tag team champion, or did you forget that? Like The Miz did. Um, Enzo and Cass are stupid. No, they're actually hilarious, and you're just an old timer. All the diva talk, like it was cool and not as all creepy when he he okay it was still kind of creepy but it was less creepy because you got to think he's like 70 almost and these girls are in their 20s and 30s like dude that could be your daughter quit saying things sexist about the divas like cheese man that is just so messed up so I'm glad Lawler's gone. I'm gonna miss him, but I guess he deserved it. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll see what happens with him. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll be bumped down to NXT to replace Corey. Probably not, but it'd be hilarious to see. And uh, that is the entire review for the draft for 2016 for the brand extension of the WWE. See you guys next time.